Don't mind me. Uh, no big intro today because I realize I'm very, very late. No try. I told you, Marshal. I told him, Junius, how he could fix it. Ain't nobody going. Let's just get right down to Hitman, From shall we? Dark City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moves west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, mm. United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Mr. Christmas said, Honestly, Matt, sometimes you testing voice. Well, I got enough sense to know that you poked around long enough. Well, that bullet's got to come out, Matt. But you said it was healing. I did, but it's not. All right. The bullet could move around and it cause trouble. Uh, maybe next week sometime. Stream I'm Elements busy right now. No. said, come to think of it, you're worse. Stream next Elements spot right. running robot face. I'll probably have some more lead that I can dig out anyway. <laughs> That's what I like, a nice cheerful position. You, Doc Adam? Yes, ma'am. I've seen your shackle down below. Who are you? Uh, Marshal Dillon. Hello, man. What can I do for you? I guess I... I want you to have a look at my Sit right there. Oh! My name's Minnie Higgins. Mm. You can call oh. me Minnie. Oh, all right, Minnie. Uh, just what's wrong with your arm? I fell off the horse. Got scratched up some. Oh. Ain't nothing bad, but there's some proud... That hurt, cat. There. I already put some turpentine on it. Well, that helps, yeah. It still needs cleaning out. Even if the bullet did pass clean through. Bullet? Doggone you, dog. What is this about a bullet? I just told the dog what happened. There weren't no bullet about it. I fell off my horse. I hit a stick, and it run clean sports? through my arm, see? Never yes, I see. Sports. Don't you believe me? No, and I don't think Doc does either. Man. You live around here, Minnie? I don't live nowhere in particular. But I'll tell you one thing. Soon as Doc here fixes up my arm, I'm leaving this town. I'm leaving at dawn. Hey, you're welcome to stay as long as you like. I'm still leaving at dawn. You're gonna ow, ow! Good shot. It was an accident. Dang cat! Cleaning the rifle. An accident. An accident. Okay. Well, I'll uh, see you later, Doc. Yeah, sure, Doc. Their marshals are all alike, real nosy. <laughs> Matt's not so bad. It's just that he likes to know why when people take a bullet, whether it's serious or not. Real nosy. <laughs> now then, Minnie, I'm going to be as gentle as I can. Oh, I can take it. Go ahead, Doc. Uh, cat bouncing on my keyboard. I'm not compromised. You guys are just dead. Well, you're kind of country even for Dodge, ain't you? 
Okay, Star, or Pickles, Butters. Be good. Here, let me put some TV on for you, Butters. No. No! Butters! You got any steak out there in the kitchen? Sure. Well, bring me one. About two inches thick and flat. Four fried eggs on top of it. This frustrating little kitten who's clawing at me and beating up my stuff, his name is Butters. Everyone knows he's Butters. He's been clawing at me, and I've been busy the past couple of days. Why well, haven't been able to stream, and it's all because of this adorable little guy. So full of energy. I'm going to put Golden Girls on for the little boy, so he'll quit being uh, like this. So there's some graffiti somewhere, which will give me a... Hitman 3. As I gotta see if this is true. Club, club entrance, okay. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and do this then. You come see me about that iron tomorrow, huh? Right, well, good night. Dog. Good night, Minnie. Okay. Sam, uh, sit out a glass. So I need to go out front. Usually you take time to say hello before you order whiskey. Yeah, he looks pretty nervous. Well, it's all very well for you to joke. You don't have the problems that I do. There's one thing I can't stand. It's a doctor feeling sorry for it. It had nothing to do with my medical practice. It's, it's that, all right. that paradigm who's been chasing Go around this way. I don't know way. what it is you got, Doc, but it must be mighty powerful. Yeah, that's just about as much sympathy as I expect from you. <laughs> I'm jealous, that's all. Ah, oh, you ought to take it easy on that. Doc's got real trouble from what I No, know. I haven't got real trouble, Doc. Got it? No woman can force herself on me. That's the spirit, Doc. Doc! Brace oh, yourself, she's in. You lied to me, Doc! I lied to you? About what? About there being no woman in here. What do you call her? Oh, now look here. Now, women are welcome here anytime, Minnie. Well, okay, so if I have to eliminate five and then this will show up, I believe. Now, come on, Doc. Now, look here, Minnie. <laughs> She's got 
kind of rough, isn't she? Yeah. But she's not a bad woman at heart. I can tell. I hope you're right. Okay, so I gotta get in. I'll say one thing. Sure got a mind of her own. Go somewhere. She waited in hiding from the outside of the monocles. She sprang out at me like a monster. Hey again, line. Butters. She said she was gonna have breakfast with me. Well, not like she said a girl has got to keep her strength. Well, and she didn't even order know the steak and eggs that are found real craft tools. With potatoes and pie on the side. She's gonna be an awful big expense to you, Doc. An awful big expense. No, no. I'm, I'm going back hey, up my Yeah, wait a minute. I'll walk with you as far as you're staring. I got a gorgeous drawer. <laughs> Just made in town from San Francisco. You raised the money, Doc. You find it. That lady is awful determined. There she is. Let's go the other way. Hey, wait a minute, Doc. No, that big Billy Willow. I used for her hat right over her head and front on. Now that's her. Just a couple of days. She ain't got no right to do that. He'll be just in her next. Come on, Doc. Just a couple of days. Come on, Doc. Just a couple of days. Here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get me a drink, and I'm going to go looking for this lover of yours, Minnie. And when I finish with him, I'm going to start on you. So now, now, no, nobody get in my way. He means it. He'll do I'm going to save just to see what happens. Mind telling him you got a lover. But I feel that way, Doc. I feel that way real strong. Well, stop feeling that way. I'm not your lover, and I never will. Oh, you come around. All men are I'll kind wait for him to come around. I thought I had a pistol of some kind. Yeah, it must be pretty stressful for the animals out there. The people hanging around. The DJs aren't light with the bass. Oh, hey, you! Enough with the tongue! Oh, Where's the mark? 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 He's out of town. We'll be back. Black dark money. There's a buffalo hunter over at the Long Branch. Green. Up Agent with... Green, are you still there? He said he's going to kill Doc. How'd he find out about Doc? We How heard a couple of barflies he... laughing We're about Minnie. Get out. How she bought Green for a house and all. How she's Don't in love go. with Doc. Yeah. Where's he at now? I left him standing at the bar. And okay. Sam's keeping an eye on things. I stepped out the back way and come over here. That don't sound too good, does it? Is he the husband of that, that Minnie that Doc's been sporting around? Doc ain't been sporting nobody around. It's all her, doesn't it? Anyway. 
anyway, he's sure in trouble. Yeah. And thanks for telling me. What do you think you're gonna do with that gun? Well, I gotta do something. Well, you gotta get yourself killed. Yeah, I'll be careful. All right, I guess I'm gonna be going in here, aren't I, huh? Boom, loud, 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 music bumping. Hey, let's con freaking. One of these doors will let me out. There's, they, nobody would actually notice him doing that, but whatever. Bar to get out there. Let me out. Because why not? around the real long way, don't I? All to see this special ending. Thousands of physicians and dentists recommend for fast relief of pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia, and heat. The liniment that's strong yet does not burn. Present our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. Now just walk down the street. It's time once again for another 
coming episode of Our Miss Brooks Transcribed. Make sure this is going. Today, many thousands of people are thankful to their physicians or dentists for first having introduced them to that remarkable preparation called Anison, which brings such incredibly fast and effective relief from the pains of hey, headache, butters. colitis, and neuralgia. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Everyone knows your butter. Ow, don't butter climb my leg. Come on, you have to calm down. Thus, in using Anison, you are following sound principles. So ask for Anison at your drug counter next time you suffer pain, headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. Try these tablets on this guarantee. If you don't feel Anison gives you all the relief you want, as fast as you want it, your money will be refunded. Easy to take Anison tablets are available everywhere in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. I'll repeat the name for you Anison. A N A Z I N. Well, although she's made a lot of friends at Madison High School where she teaches English, Armis Brooks regards someone outside of school as her most cherished. Uh. Namely, her landlady, Mrs. Margaret Davis. Yes, Mrs. Davis is a remarkably kind and generous friend. She's always doing something for somebody. Interesting. Right now, as ah! The of the Ow! Club, she's on Dang the it, kitten! She's old clothes for the underprivileged. And although I owe her four months back rent, she hasn't even mentioned it to me. I was thinking about these lovable qualities when I joined her at breakfast Ow. on Friday morning. Ow! Honey, dear. Yes, Mrs. Davis? How about coughing up the back rent you owe me? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Davis. I must have gotten some water in my ears in the shower. What did you say? I said, what about the back rent you owe me? Oh, things are fine at school, thanks. <laughs> it's nice of you to ask. But I didn't ask about Although now that you mention it, we have been terribly busy lately. We're getting ready for Founders Day. Ms. Conklin has persuaded the Board of Education to... Purchase a copy of one of August Okay, so I've Rodin's gone just about everywhere now. Placed on the auditorium stage during the proceedings. That's all very interesting, Connie. Not <laughs> completely <laughs> everywhere, though. To discuss with you. Of course, if you really didn't hear me. What back rent? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember now. It's four months, Connie. I hate to done you, dear. But I really feel it would be your own Back up here. After so if I were going to do this mission from a sniper perspective... The first person should make some effort to turn some part of the money over to whoever has it coming. To whomever has it coming, Mrs. Davis. When speaking to anyone, particularly an English teacher, okay. you must bear in mind that the preposition to takes the objective whom. It's correlatives being you, me, us, them, him, and her. <clears throat> Where's the money? <laughs> I ain't got it. <laughs> but don't worry, Mrs. Davis, I'll straighten out everything. I thought it was something in the gas station. Get some coffee, dear. Now, what were you saying about a statue at Founders Day? Well, Mr. Conklin feels... Here we go. Now we're going to see that second, that proper... He says it will remind them that they must concentrate on their future in the world of adults. It's a copy of one of Rodin's greatest works, The Thinker. The Thinker. I believe I've seen pictures of that. Isn't that the one that shows a man who knows sure? No, 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 Pickles, no! Watching television. <laughs> <laughs> well, it isn't quite that modern, Mrs. Davis. Rodan completed the thinker before Pinky Lee was even invented. <laughs> Anyhow, I called the art gallery for Mr. Conklin. Well, I'll watch that on my video later, I guess, but, uh... He delivered this morning. Well, that's nice, dear. Mr. Rodan must be a very clever man. Uh... I read in the papers that he's got another statue on exhibit at the gallery called The Kiss. The Kiss? It shows a man and woman in a romantic guy. embrace with their lips plain like a corn plaster. <laughs> What you did back there. The ladies in my club were furious when they went to see it. They thought it was positively shocking. But it's a work of art. You can say that again, Derry. <laughs> but while I'm on the subject of our club, he Connie, I wonder if you could help us out. Do you have any old clothes? Yes, I have, Mrs. Davis, but I'm wearing them to school. <laughs> However, I'll ask some of my friends if they can contribute something. 
Lock the icebox, Mrs. Davis. It's Walter Den. <laughs> Come in, Walter. I'm glad. Well, good morning, Walter. It's, it's time, time we start, start a fresh. Thanks. Union. I'll have ham and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You Try the scramble. So I'm not to take yours. Just so there's four of them. The heavens, <laughs> the I'll have it fixed up in the jiffy, dear. Here we are. Just keep Miss Brooks Status company. Status quo. Oh, okay, Mrs. Davis. Just goes oh, before I forget, Walter, Mrs. Davis's club is collecting bird. old clothes Power for the needy. Do you think it you can contribute anything? Well, oh, I'll be more than happy to dig the up whatever I can. can huh. Gosh, Mrs. Davis is a sweet character. Power. Yeah, she's so Power unselfish. Tool, she really loves her fellow it's man. And if I may say so, Miss Brooks, that's one of the qualities I admire in you, too. You love your fellow man. Well, thank you, Walter. How is Mr. Boynton? Now, that's what I call a true conversational blend. But, Miss Brooks, you know I don't like to overstep my bounds or presume to offer advice about things that don't concern me. But I know of a wonderful way you can get Mr. Boynton to generate a little steam. You're right, Walter. This is one of the things that doesn't concern you. How? <laughs> well, by taking him over to the art gallery tonight and exposing him to a certain statue. It's a man and a woman in a bear hug and smooching like crazy. <laughs> it's called The Kiss. Oh, then you've seen it. The end of an era. Oh, I've heard enough about it to know that it shouldn't even be mentioned in mixed company. Besides, it's too hot these days to go to galleries. It is kind of warm. Oh, that reminds me, Miss Brooks. Poor Mr. Conklin has to go to school this morning in his long woolen underwear. You're just full of censorable goodies today, aren't you? <laughs> no, no, no kidding. It's true. Mrs. Conklin believes that the only way to cure a cold is to bake it out. Well, when I was over there this morning, Mr. Conklin sneezed a couple of times while he was dressing, and she insisted that he put them on. Oh, I felt so sorry for him. <laughs> All right, let's do it. thermometer starts shooting up, he'll be squirming in his swivel chair like a dervish with a hot foot. Like a dervish with a hot foot, huh? Walter, normally you won't get within 50 yards of Mr. Conklin without an anti-tetanus injection. What made you drop into his house? Well, it's a new policy I've just put into practice. I make it a point to let his daughter, Harriet, China. gaze at me this for a few moments every morning. More than it sort of sends her the cool feeling that life people. is worth living Privacy after all. <laughs> Mrs. Davis. It's ironic that a cloak and dagger organization like the Just ICA the keeps its most the valuable ham secrets in here. here. <laughs> Do you find Hush conducting this fringe experiment? So I'm going to be going in and... I just hope you know what you're doing, 47. One more remark like that, Miss Brooks, and I'll crown you with the... Okay, you need to give it a rest, kitten. I'm trying to work. I'm sorry, sir. Mrs. Conklin thinks I'm coming down with a cold, and thanks to her fanaticism on the subject, I'm rigged out in apparel that would be suitable for a ride to the North Pole. Red flannels in order. Not going to kill a random person. Yes, sir. Mrs. Davis's Good Deed Club is conducting another clothing drive, Mr. Conklin. Will you contribute? If I have any old Way over there, huh? You may pick them up here in my office after school. I'll have Mrs. Conklin well, I guess these guys are really proud about showing off their stuff. Mrs. Conklin coming to school today? Yes. Yes, she's promised to bring me a bowl of hot soup and an electric blanket. <laughs> My only hope is that I may be electrocuted. <laughs> well, if you put one hand in the soup and wrap yourself up in the... No choir! Thumb in the crowns. <laughs> ah! Now, before you go, tell me, has the statue you ordered for me been delivered yet? Yes, sir. There's a big crate covered with a tarpaulin right down the hall. I'm sure it contains the statue. Good, good. Mr. Stone said he might drop by today to have a look at it. The head of the Board of Education? Yes, yes. Now, just between us, he's something of a blue nose. He's very old-fashioned. So I've been thinking, since this statue isn't wearing any... That is, Angus it's Pritchard. ...in a state of complete... Well, since it's... Naked? Miss <laughs> Brooke... <laughs> 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 Let us Sir, say it's you've got the wrong place. 
You don't qualify My thought for was that in view of Mr. Stone's sanctimonious attitude about these things, we should perhaps put something on the thinker. Like uh, a shirt, for instance. Or even something heavier. How about your long underwear? That will do. <laughs> you said go now. I'll think of something myself. Yes, sir. I suppose thanks are in order for your assistance in securing yeah, delivery of this factor. With the instructions you gave I'd me, sir, it was a very simple matter. I merely phoned the gallery and ordered statue but number 14 on the program. Some of them are really bad you bungled so many similar assignments for me in the past. Huh. I was afraid that no you might have... Number 14! <laughs> hey? The thinker was listed on the program... What the heck's going on seven. here? Number seven? Yes, seven! I even repeated it for you. I must have added them up. <laughs> of all the blundering, come in! I am in, Osgood. That means it's too dangerous for rich people. Good morning, sir. Miss Brooks, what I have to say is not fit for the ears of a lady. Kindly cover yours. Now then, Osgood. This is my time. I have just had occasion to speak with the custodian of the art gallery, and he has informed me that in compliance with a telephone request from Madison High, an outrageous statue called the Kiss has been delivered to this institution for Founders Day. The Kiss? I demand an explanation, Osgood. Well, stop scratching yourself and answer me. <laughs> or do you have an answer? Ooh, has he got an answer? <laughs> Miss Brooks, I want you to call the custodian of the art gallery and have that disgraceful piece of sculpture removed out of this school with the same <laughs> you had it Well, that works. In. What are you saying, Oswald? I'm saying, sir, that it was not I who was responsible for sullying the corridors of Madison High with this tenderous exhibit. It was the All right, so let's go around this way. Quaking before you at this you get in. Oh, it was you, Miss Brooks. Well, speak up. I'm waiting. What have you to say for yourself, young Hi there. Let's get you that out of the room, Mr. Stone. <laughs> Friends, when you suffer torturous pain from rheumatism, muscle strain, yeah, or backache, look. you want Just relief like fast. Right. That's the time to reach for heat. H E E T. Heat, the liniment that's strong, Clean yet does muscles. not burn. Go on. The moment you apply it, you can feel the heat. All right, yeah, I'm following you, buddy. To relieve your painful misery. It's a smell. That's it's because you. heat penetrates deep, oh. brings immediate relief to sore, me? aching muscles. Your Wherever you are, so rush on taste heat. The stench. heat. When did you last change your outfit? Keeps Seriously, working for hours I to bring wonderful, soothing comfort time. to the painful, yeah, aching I'll area. You Your pain <laughs> to disappear. Heat isn't oily, in there. sticky, or messy. Just you, you just brush on heat with a handy applicator, applicator that comes with each bottle, and, and it dries in seconds. So remember, right when pain of rheumatism, right? muscle strain, yeah. or backache you makes like you miserable, heat penetrating warmth gives you fast, long-lasting relief. Get heat. H-E-E-T. Heat. A liniment that penetrates deep oh, so to bring immediate relief. Well, when I called the art gallery ah. and asked them to remove the statue known as the Kiss, the I was told package. that due to a shortage of delivery trucks, they would be unable to pick it up until 5 p.m. There was nothing Thanks I could me. do I about it. So when lunch period came, subject. I went to the school cafeteria as that. usual, sat down at my usual oh, no, table, and was greeted by a most Depending unusual results, voice. Hello, Miss Brooks. Why, oh, Mr. Clinton, what in the world are you doing here? I'm keeping the date you asked me for this morning. Today <laughs> <laughs> sure is a scorcher, isn't it? It's a Lulu, Mr. Barnum. Temperature must be up around 90 somewhere. Oh, you should have seen Mr. Okay. Clinton. I was in his office a few minutes ago. He was drinking iced sorry, tea and moaning like a stricken ox. What were you doing in Mr. Johnson's office? He'd asked me to bring him a, a quart of ice cream. Outside the door. You know, He'll escort you out of the building when you're When done. I gave Help it to him, he didn't need any. He just Here scooped out a handful me. and rubbed it on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> he just can't take the heat, I guess. Why should the heat affect him more than the rest of us? 
Look, Mr. Boynton, it's a long underwear. It's a long story. <laughs> Actually, Walter found out that Mrs. Conklin thinks our Excuse beloved me. principal is We're getting a cold and insisted that I he wear his red me. flannels. Are we red clear? flannels? This time of year? Yep. <laughs> That's pretty silly. <laughs> I took mine off way back in June. <laughs> What is it you wanted to see me about, Miss Brooks? I wanted to mention Mrs. Davis's club. They're having another clothing drive. Mrs. Davis already has about a dozen suits discarded by fellows in the neighborhood. I see. I just wondered if you'd be interested in the project. Well, I certainly am. How much are the suits? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand, Mr. Barton. These suits are for the underprivileged. Well... <laughs> You're fighting me, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> you see, Mr. Conklin told me that if his wife finds any old clothes of his at home, I could pick them up in his office after school. Of course, there's nothing definite about it, and I would like to make some kind of a showing with Mrs. Davis. Uh, Mr. Boynton, remember the suit you wore when you took me to the zoo last Friday? Yes, that was my blue serge. That's right. Remember when we stopped at the aviary and you had your back to the cage? Yes. Remember how the peacock stopped to admire himself in the seat of your pants? Okay. Now, if you could bring yourself to donate uh, that... please, Miss Brooks, you're nope. exaggerating. Not that that wasn't the right answer. Besides, I'm rather attached to that old blue surge. I remember when I bought it. There was a big sale on at Sherry's department store. And when I purchased that suit, the salesman gave me a baseball I'm Sorry, bag. sir, I can't let you through, okay? You should have hit him Please with it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take whatever you can spare, Mr. Barnum. Well, I'll dig something up this afternoon, Miss Brooks. Uh, but to get back to Mr. Conklin for a moment... Must we? Well, he seemed quite upset by something beside the heat. He said that the large crate right outside his office contained a statue which was sent here by mistake. I've heard rumors about it. It must be a pretty racy piece of work. Mr. Conklin has threatened detention for any student caught peeking under the tarpaulin. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's just a copy of a statue called the Kiss. Kiss? I wonder. I saw a picture of that once in the Encyclopedia Britannica. And? Wow! <laughs> oh, that's we'll wait until after school behavior, when everybody's buddy. gone. We can take a good look at the statue if you'd like. Together? Yes, just the four of us. <laughs> Brooks, I don't like to sound like a prude, but that statue is, well, yeah. it, it, it's pretty shocking. See, it shows a man and a woman embracing. What's so shocking about a man and a woman embracing? Well, they're not only embracing, they're also kissing. Well, what's so shocking about that? Married people do it all the time. Married people? Yes. Did you ever stop to consider that the two people in that statue might be married? Say, that's an idea. Well, then it would be perfectly all right. <laughs> of course. For all we know, those two have four or five little statues at home. <laughs> We haven't cornered the market on headlines, but it's our firm conviction that news can't happen anywhere without a CBS newsman on the spot or within fast flying distance to get and report the facts. History doesn't wait on us, but we do the next best thing. Okay, how do we get up news there some more? News centers in every strategic news capital. Me too. Our reporters yeah, are backed up by years of experience in the field. CBS newsmen are a fast living lot. Wow. Nobody can break a day to make a plane faster than a CBS newsman. They're an off bitten lot, our 20th century news hawks. They're used to traveling light, I'm fast, and often broke. when news is making up. It is Bill Downs in Rome, though. Richard C. Hotelet in Bonn, Howard K. Smith and Alexander Upstairs, Kendrick in I've London, Robert C. Fairpoint in Tokyo, mine. and alert observers in Cairo, so, Hong Kong, huh. Toronto, and other world news centers are ready to move with the first right, word of a news yeah. break, it's with weird. or without toothbrush, to get there first so CBS News can get the facts to you. Daytime, nighttime, anytime, make CBS News your headquarters for headlines. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks made the mistake of ordering a statue called the Kiss instead of the Thinker to exhibit before the school assembly on Founder's Day. 
And the kiss, although artistic, has been declared completely objectionable by the head of the Board of Education. Later oh. that day, Mr. Conklin was waiting for the crated statue to be picked up. It's 3.30, Daddy. Are you ready to go home? No, Harriet, I am not. In pushing that confounded crated statue to a respectable distance from my office door, I ripped my trousers to shreds. If Mr. Stone could see me leaving the premises in the tattered garb of a hobo, I'd never hear the end of it. Well, Mother sent some of your other suits to the tailor this morning. It's right down the street. Shall I run over and bring one back? That's just what I had in mind. Now, hurry, child. I can't wait to get out of this haggard-looking garment. I'll just be a few minutes, Daddy. Hi, Harriet. Walter, how come you're still in school? Oh, your father put me on detention for a week. During lunch hour, he thought he saw me peeking under the tarpaulin of that darn statue. But it really wasn't me. It was somebody that looked like me from the back. And when Mr. Conklin called out to him, he must have run away. And then later he grabs me and reads me the riot. Oh, this will get us over. That isn't fair, Walter. Can't you prove it wasn't you? That's what I've just been planning, Harriet. They say a criminal always returns to the scene of the crime, right? Right. Well, if the peeping Tom who looks like me comes back, I'll be ready for him. A bunch of the guys in Woodshop helped me build a trap door right next to the crate. Just let that culprit try to take one more peek under the tarpaulin, and down he goes into a locked room in the basement. Oh, it sounds pretty complicated, Walter, but I hope it works. There are still a few kinks to work out. You'll have to excuse me now. I've got to do an errand for Dad. I think. Okay, Harriet. I've got to report to him right now. See you later. Tissue damage will be significantly reduced. But, of course, that would also entail that... Walter Denton, sir. Are you alone? Yes, sir. Write up your design, and I'll get into a warm hush. I've finished my detention for today, Mr. Conklin, and I... I was... Got <laughs> <laughs> that idiotic simpering, Denton. With that red flannel underwear. <laughs> you look so... If like... you don't deserve <laughs> what... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Say, there's your suit hanging on the chair. Yes, I'm cheating the system quite a bit here, but... Took it off. Why'd you take it off? Because, Master Denton... I wanted to give you an opportunity to see for yourself how screamingly comical I look in long drawers. <laughs> yes, sir, I appreciate it very much. Now but... pick up your dunce cap and get out! <laughs> yeah, it was good. Oh, the lame brain gibbering month of them. Oh, what do you... Why can't I remember that? too hot to get stop. excited. I'd go into my inner <laughs> office and fetch your electric fan. That'll make it nice and cool. Yes, indeed. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. All right, I guess I got to come down. Or I can just kill everybody. Uh, Mr. Conklin? Oh, he must have gone home. Well, what have we here? A suit on the chair. He came through for the clothing drive after all. <laughs> well, I'll just take it along and thank him tomorrow. Mrs. Davis would be so happy to get it. Da -da -da -dum -dum. Principal's office, Osgood Conklin himself speaking. This is Harriet, Daddy. The tailor's been awfully busy today and won't have any of your suits ready for at least an hour. What? I can't stand around here in my... I can't wait here all day. <laughs> Just forget about it, Harriet. Okay, that was neat, but I'm not actually going to be doing that, so... All right, Daddy. Bye. Goodbye. Where did I put that suit again? Oh, yes, right here on this empty chair. I'll just slip it on, and in no time at all, on Butters. this empty chair! <laughs> on this empty chair? <laughs> oh, stop slapping at my feet. <laughs> Kitten, I'm trying to do stuff. Well, what do you know? Here's the crate. I think I'll take a little peek at this statue before they cart it away. I'll just lift up this tarpaulin. <laughs> what happened? Where am I? Welcome aboard, Miss Brooks. <laughs> what are you 
doing down here? I'm a victim of my own invention. <laughs> I was trying to catch a guy who Mr. Conklin thought was me, so I built this trap door. But when I went to test it, it backfired on me. <laughs> Well, you've got to get out of here. Have you tried that side door? Oh, I did better than that. I locked that door from the outside. <laughs> ah, come on, kitten. Monday? Monday? You mean we're trapped in here all alone? Oh! We're not alone anymore. Oh, my God, that busted my game. This is How did you even do that, oh, cat? I, I think it's kind of clubby. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. It'll be just doing? a moment while I Same load that back are, up. Only I admitted I was curious. How do we get out of here? We can. <laughs> All right, launching again. Well, isn't it awful? <laughs> now, this is a serious matter, Miss Brooks. There's probably not a living soul within sound of our voices. And we're going to load that back up, see if it... Oh, God! <laughs> well, now that we've got a fourth, can I ask anyone? Mr. Conklin. Yeah, and he's still in those red flannels. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm warning you, Denman. I'm who said canasta, anyone? Don't what are you chewing <laughs> on, kitten? Yeah, but the door's locked from the outside. What are you chewing on? That's got nothing to do with it. Here, this crowbar will do the trick. Is no, no, it? no. Hey, hey. It's working. It's opening. It's, it's, we're free. Free, you here. Free. Now, calm down, Mr. Conklin. You're hysterical. Let go of me. <laughs> you better take his other arm, Walter. He'll hurt himself. Yeah, I got him. I... Oh, hell. <laughs> Nice of you to drop in, Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone! <laughs> I love you, buddy, but stop eating stupid shit. <laughs> You're gonna die. <laughs> Mr. Stone's been stunned by the fall. Oh, 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 Mr. Boynton. Miss Brooks. I don't know if this is the right save game to load or not. Naughty! Never mind that. It's not. Where's Mr. Conklin? I'm positive I saw him before I blacked out. Well, he became quite panicky when he saw you, Mr. Stone. In fact, only a moment ago, Mr. Boynton and Walter Denton here... That's amazing how some games just take forever to load. Panels. As you can see, they're still holding them. I, I don't understand. If they were each holding a sleeve of his underwear, how did he get out? All right, and let's try this again. This room. Trap door. All this work from the new Barton Trench Club is produced and directed by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Eddie Killen with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Bob Rockwell, Gloria McMillan, and Joseph Kern. Be sure to be with us next week for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Ah, ow! Dang, kitten. That hurt. I implemented the notes from Hush in the throughput benchmark test. I don't and I just don't know how he does it. Sitting on the floor over by the bookcase with books spread out all around. Liz, what are you doing with those books all over the floor? Sorting them. Our club is having an old book sale. Yeah. Well, don't try giving away any of mine. I'll only take the ones you're through with, like this one. Has it got a bookmark in it? Yes, but Then I'm not finished with it. Put it back. George, you'll never finish it. I will, too. Some reading is so heavy, it takes a long time to finish. Oh, well, then I'll put this one back by all means. What's the name of it? The Bobsy Twins of the Seashore. <laughs> Tell me when you finally struggle through it, George. Very fine. Well, you can take that one. Thank you. Moving on to memory. George, is this your library book, How to Play Mahjong? Oh, my gosh, I forgot about it. I'll bet it's overdue. Uh, what's the date on it? Let's see, uh, May 13th. Well, it's only a week overdue. May 13th, 1936. <laughs>
Oh, well, then you can have it. What? You want me to handle a hot book? I'm no fence. Listen, Pear Shape. Go sell your books. <laughs> no bottom. All right. <gasps> George. What's the matter? Look, on the second shelf, little men is leaning against little women. <laughs> oh, look, George. What? They've had a little pamphlet. <laughs> George, look at this, the Arbutus. Well, look at that, my old high school yearbook. Let's see it. Wait till I blow the dust off. <laughs> hmm. That's when I was graduated from high school. Mm-hmm. The Arbutus, 1929. You were a freshman in high school that year, remember? Oh, that's right. That wasn't so long ago at that, was it? No. <laughs> look, here's a picture of me. Where? Right here, with a football team. Gee, you look wonderful. Right oh. up in the front row, too. You know, George, we've still got that bucket up in the attic. <laughs> Here, let me take it, Liz. I want to read some of those things the kids wrote to me. Remember every time the annual came out, you could tell how popular you were by how many kids wrote in the margins of your copy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, none of you are good people things. anyway, so... In your golden chain of friendships, let me be one of the links. <laughs> oh, here's a beaut. Think of your friends as bananas and count me as one of the bunnies. <laughs> Oh, look, Liz, there's a picture of you here. Yeah, as a freshman princess. Let's see. Oh, oh, no! Look how short my dress was. Hmm. So that's what knees look like. Okay. Oh, don't I look awful. Can I get up and through this no. way, maybe? You were lucky. You had dimples in your knees. <laughs> That'll work. Happened? I used to spend an hour each night kneeling on two collar buttons. <laughs> I did, too. One of my knees still keeps rolling under the dresser. <laughs> oh, look how young I am in that picture. You sure were beautiful. And young. Would you like me to be that young again, George? Sure. Then we could wear father and daughter sunsuits. <laughs> I'm serious, George. Gee, that picture makes me feel old. Old? Oh, don't be silly. You're still young and pretty. I am not. Look at me then. A little flower in the bloom of youth. And look Just at me keep now, killing sweet. jerks. <laughs> oh, Liz, now don't start being silly. None of us look like we did then. That's just it, George. You do. You haven't changed a bit. Oh, your hairline may have receded a little. But All right, I got to lock down. And virile and wonderful looking as you were then. But I'm not. I have a double chin and a spare tire, and my figure is jumpy. I have crow's feet around my eyes, and my age shows in every inch of me. I'm... I'm just not young anymore. Airlines receded, huh? <laughs> Get off the old age kick, will you? No, I've got to face it, George. I'm not a girl anymore. I'm getting old and wrinkled. You are not. Yes, I am. I'm getting old and wrinkled. Now I'll admit it. All right. You're getting old and wrinkled. Ah! <laughs> Never say that to a woman. I've given you some of the best news of my life, and now you say I'm old and wrinkled. Good night. Come back here, Liz. I didn't mean it. Oh, yes, you did. I'm going to bed. When you get to be my age, you need your sleep. Oh, now what am I in for? One of all. Mrs. Cooper. I am? Oh. Oh, Katie, excuse. If you don't mind my asking, what are you doing mumbling in front of the mirror? Katie, I'm not young anymore. I didn't realize it till last night. We got out our high school annual, and I haven't felt so old since the day Shirley Temple got married. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Cooper, you've got to snap out of this. Now, maybe a nice meal would help you. What would you like for lunch? Oh, just a cup of tea. Excuse me. No. Well, perhaps a bowl of warm gruel. Oh, my God. Now, let me review this, Mr. Cooper. You looked at an old high school annual the other night, and your wife suddenly decided she was old? That's right, Doctor. Well, we psychiatrists see cases like this quite often. It's not serious. Well, she's even been telling people she's 31. How old is she? 31. <laughs> My goodness, this is serious. What other symptoms does she have? 
Well, she's in bed every night at 8 o'clock reading literature from the old lady's home. That isn't what I wanted to do, so I'm going to go all the way back to this. I know that's redundant, people, but I didn't want to just do it that way. You must reenact your courtship. Treat her as you did then. Flatter her, make love to her, convince her that she's desirable and lovely. Send her flowers and candy. You really think that'll do any good? Mr. Cooper, take my word for it. A few days of attention, and your wife will feel so young, you won't be able to leave her alone without a sitter. Liz, I'm home, honey. Where's my little baby? Here I am, George, sitting in front of the fire. Old rock and chair got me by my side. Oh, Liz, what's a beautiful young girl acting like that for? What beautiful young girl? Who came in? <laughs> you, dear. Guess what I brought you, Liz. Did you bring me something? You didn't have to bother. You know what? I don't Let's try being brave. You in my old age. Now, stop that. Guess what I brought? Just what you need to make you feel good. A hot water bottle? <laughs> no. Look, flowers and candy. Oh, roses. Roses are for young girls. George, some violets would have been nice. Well, how about a piece of candy, Grandma? Or do you have upper plate wobbles? <laughs> oh, Liz, I didn't mean it. Oh, come on. I, I think you're beautiful. I, I always have and I always will. You're beautiful and you're All right, young. Right, that is a start. George, why did you bring me candy and flour? You haven't done that in years. Well, to show you that I'm crazy about you. What have you done? Liz, if you don't snap out of now, the Now, if you'll pardon me, I'll go to my room and rest. Rest from what? You haven't done anything but eat breakfast. What tired you? Did Katie leave the crust on the toast? Go <laughs> on, have your fun, George. Isn't it enough that you found a new life for yourself? I'll see you later. Oh, what have I done to deserve it? Little old lady, young and fair, you're in everyone's hair. Hello. Dr. Stewart, this is George Cooper. It didn't work. Oh. Well, sometimes a wife won't believe flattery when it comes to her husband. Your wife needs attention from some other man. Well, I don't know if I like that idea or not. Believe me, it's the only system that'll work. And I know just the man. He's charming, attractive, clever, and exactly the romantic type to take her mind off. Don't know what I'm doing, but... Do do you think he'd help me out? I'd be glad to. (laughs) As long as you ask me, all right. I'll be out in the evening. Uh, okay. I- I'll say you're an old fraternity brother, and you've just dropped into town. Good. I'll see you at 8 That's o'clock. That's him. Crush the bastard. Wow. He looks a lot Ah, oh, that was a good dinner. What do we do tonight, Liz? Oh, I'll just sit by the fire a minute, and then go to bed. I tire so easily these days. Oh, I wonder who that can be. Oh, oh, it uh, must be Charlie I'm Stewart. I ran into him today. He's an old fraternity brother of mine. Well, I'll let him in. Know to join us for the experiment. Charlie! Charlie Stewart! Hiya, George. <laughs> Come on in. Uh, Charlie? This... George, you didn't tell me you had a daughter. And look, Charlie. <laughs> okay, we're going to see what's going on. Tell me, honey, is your mother home? He's ready to go. Look. Let's do it. Look, Charlie, I'm trying to tell you that Let him alone, George. He's doing all right. (laughs) I'm George's wife, Mr. Stewart. Wife? Why, you old cradle snatcher, you. Come on. Mr. Stewart. George, you told me she was young and pretty. No, no, no. But you didn't say she was beautiful. So, why, Charlie? We always figured you'd join school. uh, George would think of beauty, but we never expected a queen like you. Why, Chuck. Good old Charlie here before. I just got into town today. It's the first time since okay. graduated. Oh. Yeah. Charlie and I were great friends at college, weren't we, Charlie? You Six. said it. I'll never forget those good old days at Indiana U. Indiana? Ixnay. Yeah. Oh, that's where I took my postgraduate work. Okay. I'll never forget those days at good old Ixnay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he means uh, Dean at Yale. <laughs> Gee, that was a long time ago. Yes. 
I've always been too busy to learn to samba. Will, will you teach me, Mrs. Cooper? The sick I'm sorry. The last dance I learned was the black bottom. Nonsense. I can tell by looking at you. You could teach me in a minute. Oh, listen to that beat. Well, I haven't seen it done. Good girl. Now, I'll just put my arm around you like this. Hold you real close. Is that the right position for the samba? No, but don't let that stop you. <laughs> Uh, just okay. Minute, Charlie, old man, uh, don't you think you better wait for the music to start again? Just the treatment, George. The treatment. <laughs> what are you two whispering okay. about? Okay. Oh, nothing. Just uh, politics. Oh, who cares about man talk when there's a beautiful woman around? Shall we dance, Liz? All right. Now watch my feet. All right. Back and forth. Uh -huh. Back and forth. 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 Because you're such a wonderful teacher, you're light as a feather. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Don't you think he caught on quickly, George? It's too late. Yeah, it's only taken him three hours so <laughs> far. <laughs> treatment, George. Can I try more? Well, all right, but it looks Just... like more of a treat than a treatment. <laughs> you're going to kill yourself. Oh, George, what'd you turn the radio off for? Well, I'm tired of that. Let's set this one out, Liz. What? Liz, what? That's a kidding. Don't kill him. Come <laughs> I don't care about dancing, it's just a chance to hold you close to me. You're gorgeous. You're gorgeous, you're ravishing. I, I, I can't take my eyes off you. Hey, what are you two whispering about? I've never, I've never met anyone who did this to me before. You're everything I've ever dreamed of, everything now, I've listen, ever... Now listen, cut that out! <laughs> treatment, George, treatment! <laughs> What do you know about treatment? Nothing. Okay. You leave us alone every time he says it. Well, it doesn't work anymore. It's late, and you have to go home, don't you, John? Well, I don't really. Look, Liz and I are tired. Well, if you put it that way. I'm not tired. It's only one o'clock. There, see? Well, let's put it this way. I'm tired of you. Why, George? Remember the treatment, George. To heck with the treatment. You're fired. Fired? What are you talking about? He's not an old schoolmate. He's a psychiatrist. I hired him to come here and try to snap you out of this old age nonsense. What? Good night, Dr. Stewart. Good night, Mr. Cooper. I'll send you my bill in the morning. <laughs> mm. Oh, Liz, I'm sorry. I had to blow up like this, but you're all cured now. Well, you are, aren't you, Liz? Liz? Oh, rocket chairs got me. Well, she stopped to drink something. Cooper residence. Katie, this is Mr. Cooper. I just called to see how Mrs. Cooper's been acting this morning. I'm afraid she's just as bad as ever, Mr. Cooper. The last time I saw her, she was making. Let me get rid of that will. stupid assistant. Her will? What does she have to will to anyone? Well, she's leaving you to me. <laughs> oh, that's generous of her. Look, Katie, I'm going to try something drastic. I'm going to bring home a companion for her. Uh, an old lady about 70 years old. Oh, oh, Mr. Cooper. Yeah, and when she sees the difference between them, it ought to shock her out of her. Well, I think I that'll work. Decided to well, I'll see you later. I'm going to pick up Mrs. Green no. at the old lady's home. You're going to be a part of Okay, who's that on the phone? Oh, it's a friend of mine. Uh, did you finish your will? Oh, that was just a silly thought. Isn't it a wonderful day? Well, what happened to you this morning? You were Grandma Moses, and now you're Junior Miss. <laughs> oh, I had a call from someone. Who? Oh, that psychiatrist who was here last night. He called up and asked me for a date. Well, he didn't have any effect on you last night. I know, but last I'll night he was hired by George. This date was his own idea. But he knows you're married. Aren't you insulted? Okay. I certainly Good. am. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> but you're not going, are you? Of course not, but I'm glad he called. 
Make me feel young again. Huh? Good. Well, I guess I'd better call Mr. Cooper. He had another plan to snap you out of it. <laughs> he was going to bring home an old lady to be your companion. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. <laughs> I'll call him and tell him to. Oh, no, no, no. Listen, he tricked me with the doctor last night. Let me have a little fun with him. What are you going to do? Well, get me a shawl to put over my head, please, and some glasses to put on the end of my nose. And when George and my companion get here, I'm going to be a little old lady. <laughs> Coming up the walk, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, she's real old. Well, give me the shawl. Okay. Oh, these glasses tickle the end of my nose. Oh, oh Liz. Sorry, uh, boy. Honestly, you're a horrible Liz, person. And... Oh, Georgie, you brought me some company. Of course she has. I'm glad to meet you, Mrs. Cooper. My, you're skinny. <laughs> And that doctor deserves to die, too. Liz, could I see you in the hall, please? Now, run along, Georgie. We girls want to have a little chat. Uh, of course we do. Uh, I'm 72. How old are you? 84. <laughs> you know, you you don't look a day over 70. All right, we're going through it still. Let me see if my darling bride has had anything to say. Tell me, how do you do it? Penicillin. Liz? Uh, go away, Georgie. Say, <laughs> how did you get such a young, handsome husband? Penicillin. <laughs> I mean, I met him through an ad in the paper. No. Yeah. He was handsome bachelor, snappy dresser, and I was elderly lady with me. Okay. Let's sit down and do this again. Which paper did you get him through? They've got good ones. Liz, this isn't very funny. Go away. Uh, go away, Georgie. You bother me. Now, uh, Mrs. Cooper, call me Lizzie. My name's Annie. Oh, Annie. Tell me, Dizzy, do you like to dance? I used to when I was a girl, but now I've got the gout. Oh, nuts. You have to die, too. I can't dance any unless I get oiled. <laughs> In my joints, I mean. I've been oiling a few joints myself. All right, let's see what we got, caution. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you got snow on the roof don't, don't mean there's no fire in the finish. Say, Lizzie, yeah? do you play bingo? No. I know where there's a game going on right now. In the middle of the afternoon? Sure. No, in back of the Bluebird Tea Shop. There's a hot game it. going on all day long. The tea shop's just the front. Come on, get your green eye shade and let's go. I'll get my wheelchair. We can ride down. All right. Uh, what model you got? Oh, a real hopped up job. I hope to do a mix master. Mix master, eh? Does it work? Oh, I had some speed trials yesterday. What did you make? 14 miles an hour and a sponge cake. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense. What's going on? Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee hee. 47's just got those kind of... Wait a minute. I don't understand this at all. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Green. I'll explain in a minute. I'm all right now, George. Something happened today that made me see how silly I've been. Well, thank goodness. When the presents didn't work and the psychiatrist didn't work and even swallowing my pride and having him call you and ask you for a date didn't work... I Come on. Where are you going? Come on, Annie, let's go play bingo. You got the bastard hush. I'll go get Angel Rose and I can get to the court. 
My Favorite Husband, has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. dental cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and luster cream shampoo for soft glamorous caressable hair bring you our miss brooks starring eve arden it's time once again for another comedy episode of our miss brooks well if persistence alone can earn a high grade, you've got to give our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, an A for effort. It's taken almost five years. But this weekend, she arranged to have Mr. Boynton, Madison's shy biology teacher, all to herself. Just get down yes, there. Indeed. This time, I absolutely put my foot down. It was just Mr. Boynton and me and 500 delegates to the teachers' convention. <laughs> you see, over the past weekend, a special meeting was held in Evanston to help celebrate American Education Week. I had persuaded Mr. Conklin, our beloved principal... Fine, I'll just get downstairs this way. ...as Madison's representative. And Friday morning, my landlady came into my bedroom just as I finished packing a valise for the trip. You know, Connie, it looks just like cowhide. I know, I haven't put my makeup on yet. <laughs> that was loud. Oh, you mean the valise. <laughs> it is nice, isn't it? I borrowed it from Mrs. Rapp down the street. Have you got everything packed, Connie? I think so. Let's see. The nighty Harriet Conklin loaned me is in. And Mrs. Conklin's negligee, that's in. And your nylon stockings are in. Yes, I've got my things all packed. <laughs> Good. And just wait until you see the new suit I'm wearing for the occasion. Of course, I won't be able to put that on until 5.15 today. Why not, Connie? Tilly Eberhardt doesn't get home from work until then. <laughs> You're terribly excited about this weekend trip, aren't you, dear? Oh, of course, Mrs. Davis. This I'm is just quite amazed an important that somebody invention. With a tech whiz I'll get an opportunity to, to exchange ideas and opinions with other people it's in like my line of work. I'll get an opportunity brain. to see what's being accomplished now. at other Next, schools. What else will you get, Connie? I'll yes. get all my expenses paid and a whack at Mr. Boynton. Oh, it would be nice. You and Mr. Boynton seeing strange places and strange faces together. The strange places are all right, but the strange faces can go to the races. Honestly, everyone in this facility should be killed. How did he happen to choose you as a delegate? Oh, it's very simple, Mrs. Davis. Remember two weeks ago, Mr. Conklin got himself a new gray flannel suit? Yes, indeed. His wife Martha told me he spent a small fortune on it. I'm glad it was a small fortune. I spilled a small bottle of ink on it Monday. <laughs> you did. He now has gray flannel pants and a very sporty blue jacket. <laughs> anyway, on Tuesday, sure he left his wristwatch on his desk, and I accidentally brushed it to the floor while I was picking up some papers. No. Then when I bent down to get it, I broke the crystal. Oh, but the crystal is easily repaired. Not when you break it by putting your heel through the back of the watch. <laughs> but, Connie, I still don't understand. Why did Mr. Conklin pick you for the convention this weekend? I was just getting to that, Mrs. Davis. You see, Mr. Conklin is buying a new pair of glasses this morning, and he wants to give them a three-day head start. Sounds logical. Okay. Well, I know another English teacher at Madison who'll be mighty disappointed Hello? that she's not going on this trip. You mean Miss Enright? I do. She's almost as sweet on Mr. Bowden as you are. And this weekend trip would be a wonderful opportunity. Die. Cut you out with him. Please, Mrs. Davis, I just Horrible got up. people. Why talk about nightmares. <laughs> No more pencils, no more books, no more... Wait for me, Miss Brooks! <laughs> well, Walter Denton, why didn't you pick me up this morning? You know my car's in the repair shop. So is mine. But I'm glad I caught you before you dropped into Mr. Boynton's biology lab. What makes you think I was going to drop into the biology lab? 
please, Miss Brooks, it's too early in the morning for quips. I'm gonna take you down. <laughs> Devastated you'll be by the news, but Mr. Boynton won't be able to go to the convention. He's sick in bed. Sick in bed? How do you know? Harriet told me. He called in a little while ago and left the message with one of the teachers. Well, how can I leave town if Mr. Boynton is sick? He has no more relatives in this part of the world than I have. Who will take care of him? Let me put your mind completely at ease, Miss Brooks. Harriet and I can run errands for Mr. Boynton, and I'm sure Miss Enright will be glad to nurse him back to health. She's an RN, you know. Yes, I know. A real nothing. <laughs> You're not exactly smitten, Miss Enright, are you, Miss Brooks? Well, frankly, Walter, there isn't a lot of affection squandered between us. Well, she always speaks highly of you. Now, just the other day, Miss Enright said the only reason she can't see a romantic attachment between Mr. Point and yourself is because of the difference in your ages. Miss Enright said that? Sure. Let's see now, what were her exact words? Oh, I remember. She said that in her opinion, Mr. Boynton was definitely old enough to be your kid brother. <laughs> well, she did, did she? Well, that makes my next step quite apparent. If you'll excuse me, Walter, I'm going right over to the principal's office. What for? I've got to see a man about a cat. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Conklin. Don't come any closer, Miss Brooks. But, sir, I just... If you take one more step, I'll call for help. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know, I am sure, that thanks to your valiant efforts, I have become one of the poorest accident insurance risks in this part of the state. <laughs> I won't draw an easy breath until you're on the train this afternoon. I presume you're packed and ready to go? Yes, sir, and I'm really looking forward to it. This is the first convention I've attended since I represented Gordon High School six years ago. That was a lot of fun. You're not going to this convention to have fun, Miss Brooks. I am not doing Standard this. Bearer, our school will be judged by your actions. Always remember that. Oh, I will, Mr. Conklin. You can depend on me, sir. I won't get myself thrown into jail this time. <laughs> I already have a jail. screwdriver, yep. You mean you were thrown into jail at your last convention? For the most absurd reason, Mr. Conklin. Can you imagine being locked up for riding around on a motorcycle? That's hardly a jail offense. That's exactly what I told the policeman. Besides, he wasn't using it at the time, anyway. <laughs> you took a policeman's motorcycle? It was just a lark. There was absolutely no reason for them to put that picture in the paper. What picture? A picture of me holding up a burlesque queen in the drunk tank. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you can start unpacking at any time. You're not going to the convention. Not going? But Mr. Conklin, think of your new Scum, glasses. Scum, all my of you. will have to live dangerously like the rest of my person. <laughs> but if you don't send me, who will you send? I haven't given it any thought. I... Have you any suggestions? All right, who I else needs to die? I either, Miss Enright. <laughs> Miss Enright might be just the first. She has poise, bearing. You think she'll relish the idea of going? Believe me, Mr. Conklin, when you tell her about it, she'll be so happy she'll clap her paws in glee. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I'll get to my classroom. Very well, Miss Brooks. This, Miss. Stop yelling. Why is everybody right. yelling? Uh Uh, turn this morning. down. Good morning, Miss Brooks. Good morning, Mr. Boynton. Wait till you hear the news. I was just in Mr. Conklin's office. At... Mr. Boynton, what are you doing up? Go right home and get back into bed at once. Bed? What for? I'm not sick. You're not? Oh, I, I never felt better in my life. What a revolting development this is. <laughs> Walter told me that Harriet said you were sick in bed. Harriet? I didn't talk to Harriet. When I phoned the school this morning, I thought I was going to be delayed at the biology supply house, so I left that message with one, with one of the teachers. What <laughs> teacher? Miss Enright. I should have said witch teacher. She's a witch teacher if I ever saw one. <laughs> um, now, now, do you suppose she could have confused the words delayed with laid up? 
There's no confusion at all. This is the result of careful calculations. Miss Enright knew that Harriet would tell Walter. Also that Walter would, if he saw me, and that cousin Harriet would be almost sure to, tell me, and then knowing what she would do, or thinking she knew what I would do, she told Harriet what I later heard from Walter. And then I did what she thought I'd do. <laughs> Miss Brooks, uh, are you all right? Why are you speaking in such jerky sentences? There's a good reason, Mr. Boynton. I have just been completely taken in by a very jerky teacher. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a clean your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Clean your breath. What a toothpaste. What a clean your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. More than two years' research showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating helped stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way stopped tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. All right, who else needs to die? While not mentioned by name, was the Scum. one and only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop Can't believe they do this to people. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate dental cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. <laughs> And time to go. I told Mr. Boynton that I suspected Miss Enright of deliberately saying he was ill so that I would withdraw and she could go in my place. At first he refused to believe it of her, but finally his sense of justice was so completely outraged that he seemed beside himself with fury, and he violently shouted, Maybe it was all a misunderstanding. <laughs> go where you're going, buddy. Why should Miss Enright think you'd stay home from the convention even if I were sick in bed? Because I would, that's why. Somebody would have to take care of you, get you your medicine and fix your meals and see that you were made comfortable. Uh, Miss Brooks, may I remind you that I'm not sick in bed? Oh, I know that, Mr. Boynton. And would you mind not taking my pulse? I need this hand to finish my wax beans. <laughs> I still say that when people haven't any relatives in a place, it's up to the people who think something of people to do something for the people they think something of. Maybe I should teach Spanish. <laughs> I, I know you're right. disappointed about not attending the convention, Miss Brooks, but if you have any suggestions you'd like me to put before the meeting... I... There's only one suggestion I'm worried about, and that'll come from Miss Enright to you. Hey, that's funny. What? Interesting. What's going on right? here? She's heading for the table now. Well, speak of the devil. It's just the way she's wearing her hair. <laughs> Uh-oh, she spotted us. Hello, Miss Brooks. Uh, Mr. Boynton, why aren't you home in bed? His sheets caught fire. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know yourself, Miss Enright, but I only phoned to say I might be delayed getting to school. Delayed? I thought you said laid up. You did? See, Miss Brooks, it was a misunderstanding. Oh, of course. Like the one Custer had with those red chaps. <laughs> now, don't be a bad loser, darling. Not that you are, really. I understand that you personally recommended me to Mr. Conklin for the position of second delegate from Madison High. You did that, Miss Brooks? I wish my mother had quit after my two older brothers were born. <laughs> mind if I join you at this table? The cafeteria is quite crowded right now. Not as crowded as this table right now. All right, that doesn't get me the code, though. Right down, Miss Enright. I see you have your own sandwich. Can I get you some water or a napkin or something? Oh, go ahead, Diamond Jim. Bring her a toothpick, too. <laughs> I'd love some water, please, Mr. Boynton. Very well. I'll get some for all of us. I'm a great boy for water. <laughs> Great boy for a lot of things. <laughs> well, you'll be happy to know, darling, that Mr. Conklin told me of my selection as second delegate early in the day. 
That's why I was able to get home during a free period, pack a valise, and put on my new fall traveling suit. You like it? It's all according how far you travel. <laughs> Look, Miss Enright, we both know that I have to get to down there somehow. Fault, but we also know that my not going is your fault. Do I make myself clear? Rain, rain. To me, yes. But, but I can't help can wondering how again. much of you get to cross to your I wouldn't mind promotion, <laughs> <laughs> well, That's the wrong attitude, isn't it? Yes. Let's not spell. spoil Mr. Boynton's luncheon with a lot of female dickery. You're right, Miss Enright. I might as well be a good sport shit. about it. All fair and you know what kind of war, war I guess. Well, here we are, ladies. Good old aquafina. Ready to save some dance. water. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Boynton. I brought some coffee for us, too. Oh, that was very considerate, Mr. Boynton. Oh, I'm just finding another another way into this same place, aren't I? Very provocative shade of green. Don't you think My present is puzzling. I can't tell where her suit leaves off and my face begins. Actually, Miss Enright, it is an interesting shade of green. Who knows, you may blend in with your Pullman chair so well, Mr. Boynton won't be able to find you. <laughs> is that what you call being a good sport? Get down. Sorry. Let's be gay, shall we? Drink up, Mr. Boynton. We'll knock that water cooler silly. <laughs> I've had plenty, thanks. I'm working hey. on this beef stew right now. If you ladies have oh, oh, oh. not much of a conversation, we'll let me know. Hi. Of course, Mr. Boynton. Bon voyage. Tell me, Miss Enright. Other clothes are you taking Ow. on the trip? Oh, just my two good dresses. Matter of fact, they're the only two I wear out of the house. Yeah, hell off, but I thought you had quite an extensive wardrobe. Oh, I did, but I gave loads of last year's stuff to Terry. I feel the poor have to live too. What a liberal viewpoint. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Miss Enright. I'd really like to let bygones be bygones. I'm going to get myself a little dessert now. May I bring you something? Well, I could do with a piece of pie. I'll be happy to do you with a well, I'll try research her again. <laughs> I'll pick out something real nice. Where are you going, Miss Brooks? Can I get something for you? You keep bucking that beat. You're only yards away from a first down. <laughs> I'll be back in the jiffy. Don't make it anything too rich, darling. Oh, leave it to me, darling. I'll fix you up fine. Hi, I was happy to see that Mr. Boynton wasn't sick enough to miss school today. He's not sick at all, Harry. It's just a plot to get me to volunteer to stay home so Miss Enright could go to the convention in my place. I suggested her to Mr. Conklin myself. And he took your suggestion? Hook, line, and stinker. Stinker. <laughs> but I've got an idea Come that may stick Anybody there? the table. Come in. I'm going to get Miss Enright a nice piece of pie. A piece of pie? Because she played a dirty trick on you? Roger, man. Let's see. Now, what goes for us with a green dress? <laughs> with a green dress? Get it, Miss Brooks. You're going to present Miss Enright with the pie, but in several places. Why, Harriet Conklin, what an outrageous thought. I'll just take this coconut cream pie, I believe. How about taking this piece, too? Both of you? Sure. Then you can lose your balance easily. And as you let her have it, you can sing White Christmas. <laughs> You have an extremely poetic mind. <laughs> oh, Harriet, there's no one at this counter to punch my food check. Can you please get it done for me? I'll pick it up on my way out. Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. You go right ahead. I'd love to kill all the guards, but... Happy landing on... Hey, pickles, <laughs> butters. I hope I wasn't too long. I brought some pie back for both of you. I was very thoughtful, which it looks delicious. Oh, yes, it does. I'll pass Mr. Boynton's piece over to you. Well, back to the clown suit. Oh, come on, let me have it. <laughs> well, if you insist. Oh, 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 I must have tripped. How could you be so clumsy? Oh, my goodness, the pie's all over your new suit. Oh, well, not quite all over it, Mr. Boynton. Most of it's splattered on the coat. Skirt's not touched. Oh, that's what I get for not keeping my head down. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just dip a napkin in this water. Maybe we can get some of the goo off your coat. Let me uh. Watch out for the coffee cup. Oh, no. All over my skirt. That's what I call teamwork. Sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Miss Enright. My new suit is completely ruined. First pie on the coat, then coffee on the skirt. It's like I always say, what good's a piece of pie without a cup of coffee? <laughs> Really? Okay. You 
summer leaves me cold at this point. Hey, Butters. A good thing I had the foresight to pack my other dresses and leave them in my gym. Oh, it is indeed, Miss Enright. You'd hardly have time to get new clothes this afternoon. The train leaves at 5.45. Well, accidents will happen. I apologize again, Miss Enright. And now, if you'll both excuse me, I've got to practice a bit. So, yes, someone is here for a tour of the facility. Bars Ooh, I'm very way to get in. <laughs> for me, Mr. Conklin? Uh, yes, Miss Brooks, I did. I have just spoken with Miss Enright. Uh, did you bring she, it appears, was foolhardy enough, enough to have lunch with you. <laughs> <laughs> we did share the same table. Fortunately, she escaped without any serious bodily injury. <laughs> However, she has been forced to withdraw as Madison's second delegate for the teacher's convention in Evanston. You mean she's not able to go? Miss Brooks... When Miss Enright informed me that you had peppered her garments with a slab of coconut cream pie, it didn't surprise me in the, the least. VIP has access but there's to one the thing that does puzzle me. What's that, Mr. Hey, hurry up. The man is if it isn't revealing too much of a trade secret, Miss Brooks, would you kindly tell me how you managed to plop a second piece of cream pie on the dresses packed inside her valise? <laughs> Which was inside her locker? I guess when I get clumsy, I just go hog wild. <laughs> well, until they infringe upon school operations, personal rivalries on the faculty are not my concern. However, there are two train tickets available for this trip. I know it. Yes, sir. Two tickets. And no, there are two I'm delegates expected at the convention. That's right. Two delegates expected. Two of them. And you know, Mr. Boynton is one of the delegates. Ah, uh, no. Get off the keyboard. Get out of there. Right, Mr. Conklin, you're so right. You're the rightest thing since the right brothers. <laughs> Just one more delegate's all we need. Miss Brooks. Yes, Mr. Conklin? Get off my desk. You are not going. <laughs> I have just made my selection for de delegate number two. Who? Me. You? None other. Not only will the trip do me a world of good, it will reflect prestige and credit upon Madison High as well. However, I don't want you to feel completely off of things, Miss Brooks. So? So I want you to type up these notes for me. They contain some remarks no. I will make to the convention. Who's luggage and wants to handle that oh, first? Miss Brooks? Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, Thank Mr. You. Conklin. Yes? I realize it's quite late, but how would you like to be my guest for a little lunch? <laughs> hey, you're a trespasser. <laughs> hey, you, you're coming with me, understood? That's good, sir. We'll be out of here right away. That was it, sir. You're free to go. Move along. Miss Brooks, you must be upset today. You're talking to yourself. I know. I'm a very good listener. Oh, it's you, Mr. Boynton. Yes, I'm going in to talk to Mr. Conklin for a moment. Mr. Conklin, are you in trouble? Ooh, not at all. I'd rather not mention why I'm seeing him until after the interview. But if you'll wait right here, Miss Brooks, I think I'll have a pleasant surprise for you when I come out of his office. Surprise? Yes, no, no, wait right by that fire hose on the wall. I'll just be a few minutes. Don't worry, Mr. Boynton. Like Unless the hose catches on fire, I'll be here. <laughs> Uh. I'm glad you waited for me, Miss Brooks. This hose has doubled over exactly 62 and a half times. Now, what's the surprise? Well, I, I knew how anxious you were to make this trip to Evanston, so when Miss Enright withdrew, I determined to prevail upon Mr. Conklin to let you go as originally planned. But there are only two tickets available, and Mr. Conklin is using one of them himself. I know that, Miss Brooks, but you're going anyhow. I am? Yes, I turned back my ticket to Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Of course, he, he was a little timorous at first, but when I pointed out how helpful you could be to him, taking notes and typing and whatnot, he agreed to have you accompany him to the convention. But what Butters. about you, Mr. Boynton? Well, don't worry about me. I'll be busy as a bee over the weekend. I'll probably go on a shopping tour with Miss Enright. You really must excuse me, Mr. Boynton. This is the only traveling dress I own, and I've got to fix it up right away. Fix it up? What's wrong with it? That's obvious. It hasn't any coconut cream pie on it. Eve Arden is our Miss Brooks. Returns in just a moment, but first... 
Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair could look after a Luster Cream shampoo. <laughs> Luster Cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K-Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream All right, now I gotta get out of here. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean. Go find that form. Listening with sheen. Manageable. Even in hardest water, luster cream lathers instantly. No Seventeen people viewing, I am surprised and happy. So gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You Sorry, man. Crowning glory. It's just you'll stew to me off. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, by the time I got to the cafeteria, they were all out of pie. So I took a short detour through the machine shop, where a terrible thing occurred. I accidentally ripped my dress on a rusty nail lying in a locked toolbox, which I had jimmied open. <laughs> About 15 minutes later, as I left Mr. Conklin's office, I bumped into Miss Enright. Oh, it's you, Mr. Don't you think you've you done out? enough damage for one day? I'm terribly sorry about what happened, Miss Enright, but I have tried to make it up to you. What do you mean? I've just arranged with Mr. Conklin for you to go in my place. But my clothes! Mrs. Davis is bringing over her new suit. All right, you and your wife. We both wear the same size, and she said she'd be happy to lend it to you. Well, you have had an attack of conscience, Miss Brooks. But I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'll turn my head. <laughs> well, thank you, dear. Mr. Boynton and I will send you a postcard. Well, Miss Enright, I hear you're going to the convention after all. Yes, indeed, Mr. Conklin. Uh, Come on. At 5.45, so be sure to meet me at the station at 5.30. <laughs> what about Mr. Boynton? I'm going in his place. I've got to pack my bag. Be sure you're on time, Miss Enright. <laughs> If I live to be a hundred. Oh, that's now let's go terrible, up top. Miss Enright. You can't hold a grudge for the next five years. <laughs> Ooh. That is brutal. This is Burn Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show, brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written right. by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler. That gets me through here. By Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crana, Gloria McMillan, and Mary Jane Croft. <laughs> Doctor Through Palmolive Soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,200 women that Palmolive Soap facials, using nothing but Palmolive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with Palmolive Soap. Each time, for 60 seconds, massaging Palmolive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse and pat dry. So start your Palmolive facials today. Remember, oh, one, one, eight. palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Folks, meet Eve Arden, radio's own Miss Brooks, at home and at school in the pages of the Current Look magazine. Yes, it's a photo feature of Eve, her associates at Madison High, and with scenes of her home life after school is dismissed. All in the current issue of Look magazine, now on sale at all newsstands. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles and chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over this same network. Okay. Don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of the amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night, and be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. 
Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You like his bald head, don't you, Butters? Because everyone knows you're Butters. Who's my little kitten? Yeah, it's you, isn't it, buddy? We're being really boring, even Five though 19 minutes. people are watching us. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your so. teeth and help stop tooth decay. And Palm Olive Shave Cream for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave. Bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, many of the traditional yes. basketball rivalries were settled during the past week. In Madison High School, where Let's Our Miss Brooks teaches English, continue, was no exception. Their big we game with Play City High was yet. scheduled for Friday night. Well, we and last Wednesday morning, while driving her to school, Walter Denton, the team's manager, the tried to sell Miss Brooks a ticket. Yes, get moving. The restaurant is in front. I'm sorry, Walter, but I don't think I'm interested. I don't think you're interested. But, Miss Brooks, that's treason. How much are the fees? A buck a piece. If this be treason, make the most of it. <laughs> Look, Walter, I don't want you to think that I'm lacking in school spirit. The reason I haven't attended more games this season is because of embarrassment. Our team was just awful. Sixteen straight defeats, isn't it? This year, altogether, it's 39. <laughs> but the important game is Friday night with Clay City. I know. I saw the Clay City game last year. I'll never forget how miserable I felt when I left that gym. The score was Clay City 92, Madison 6. I shouldn't have left. They really clobbered us in the second half. Now, I hope we make a better showing this year. If only to keep our beloved principal's blood pressure from reaching a new high. Well, I don't like to be prematurely optimistic, Miss Brooks. Wow. But I met a fellow on our campus yesterday who may make a big difference in the outcome of Friday night's game. You mean through him we have a chance of winning? Definitely. I'm surprised at you, Walter. You should have turned him into the district attorney immediately. Yep. Now, this is a kid who went to Clay City High until his folks moved into our district last week. And now he's going to transfer to Madison. Are you getting to where you can destroy stuff? Oh, it's Star over there. Hi, Star. Hi, Star's pretty girl. Lionel Barrymore. Well, this guy happens to be the greatest scholastic basketball player in this area. And what a build on him. He must be six feet four. Who is this super kid, Walter? Well, his name is Tex Barton. Of course, Tex is just a nickname because his family came to Clay City from Texas. Sounds reasonable. And his real name is Vic Barton. Don't you remember the fellow who scored over 50 points against us in the game last year? Well, now that you mention it, I do I'll remember a boy started. named Vic Barton. Well, just well Tex moments. Barton and Vic so Barton are the same person. Around. No I'll wonder he's so tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are, Mr. Brooks. Don't we say, I think that's Tex Barton's first school now. After you, Mr. Brooks. Thanks, Walter. Hey, wait up, Tex. I want to talk to you. If you use your camera, you can tap that pen. Walter, do. I'm sure glad to... Excuse me, ma'am. I reckon you're Walter's mother. <laughs> Have another reckon on me. <laughs> this is Miss Brooks, Tex. She teaches English here. English? Yes, it's a language spoken just north of Texas. <laughs> Well, I, I've got to be getting in now. It only open nice to meet you, Tex. Security Most clearance. people feel that way. The signal's me. encrypted without a <laughs> But we really didn't meet hardly. Uh, would you mind if I joined you after school and we chinned for a spell? Well, I'm afraid I'll have to take my chin <laughs> home after school. <laughs> I've got to help Mrs. Davis fix dinner tonight. Now, that's awful decent of you, ma'am. Security I'll be happy to have over. dinner with you. Huh? <laughs> you see my folks? out visiting tonight. After I spend what I got on me for lunch, I won't be able to right, afford then. no dinner unless I get some right, get frisked. And, uh, of course, down home, we See if my nice darling bride has said anything? Yes, sir, there's nothing like splitting your child to help you get acquainted. 
Well, get a pencil. I'll tell you how to get to my chuck wagon. <laughs> that won't be necessary, Miss Brooks. I'll bring Tex over myself at six o'clock sharp. Good. And ma'am, thanks to the for the invite. <laughs> You're welcome, Hoppy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, suppose you take Tex into Mr. Conklin's office. Only you can help him get registered real quick. And speed is of the essence, as you know. Yes, I do. All right, Walter, you park your car, and I'll take Tex in with me. ID I do oblige you know of you, ma'am. What the hell does that mean? Uh, do you think the principal will be willing to swear me in this morning? Well, it's all according to his mood, Tex. I can promise you one thing, though. When we get to his office, said, you'll either be sworn in or out. the greatest asset. Mr. Conklin's office is right down this hall, no Tex. You don't have to perform a daily multi-layered full-body scan to guarantee that no Hello, employee will act erratically Daddy's having one of his PTSD or again. other mental issues. Well, abuse, physical what health have issues, we here? It's interesting. Pressure, oh, this is Tex Barton, hazards. Harriet. The scan Tex, only this takes is Harriet Conklin. Let's Howdy. step inside. <laughs> Hello. You're a long one, aren't you? All right, let's see. And cuter than most. Are you going to be a student here? Security protocol. I sure hope so. Now. I'm sorry, Say, but we can't really proceed something. beyond this room I until the security be. clearance is for you. If I ain't too bold, miss, I wouldn't exactly shortly. call you a little old lump of sugar, Shit. but I, I wouldn't want to leave you too close to my little old pinto either. The facility AI will blow your head off. Get me to one of those computers and do it fast. Okay, get off my keyboard. Now you'll have to excuse us, Harriet. We've got to see your father right away. All right, Miss Brooks. See you later, Tex. Goodbye. Who goes there? <laughs> two friends, sir. Two unarmed friends. <laughs> Come in. Access granted. Uh, good morning, Mr. Conklin. I wouldn't disturb you, sir, but it's quite uh, important. One moment, please. So it's finally happened, Miss Brooks. Mr. Boynton has taken you to the zoo once too often. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, uh, uh. The zoo? Don't look now, but one of the giraffes has followed you to school. Okay. Stupid game. Please, Mr. Conklin, this is Tex Barton. Tex, I'd like you to meet Madison's principal, Mr. Osgood Conklin. Howdy. What do you know? It's all. <laughs> now, uh, what can I do for you? And please be brief. I thought you might you check his here. transfer papers, Mr. Conklin. Tex wants to enroll as soon as possible. Well, I suppose that can be arranged. From what high school Shit. are you transferring? Clay City. Need to intercept that 47. Fine. I'm always happy the to meet anybody. AI will comes... blow your cover. Clay City. Get me to one of those computers and do it fast. Our You've got 60 Real seconds for all of your breaks, Mr. Conklin. But I'm glad to meet you anyhow. <laughs> Oh, you are. <laughs> Miss Brooks, kindly remove this elongated St. Bernard from my office. Now, hold on there. Who are you calling a St. Bernard? Oh, don't be uh, She was the who didn't mean anything derogatory. You two have got to be friends. Oh. Now, go ahead, Tex. Give him your paw. Sorry. I mean, shake hands. <laughs> Side, ma'am. Now listen to me, Mr. Conklin. I... You listen to me. Hurry! You go right back Time's to Jason running Bill out. And tell him we don't want any of his Clay City dunces fluttering up Madison. Oh, please, Dang it. Mr. Conklin, you can't know on this short notice whether Tex is a dunce or not. That's All right, let's do it again. No, how? Hey, Star. <laughs> it says you know one of those computers, but it isn't telling me a computer. You mean one of those computers? What? What is one of those computers? I have got to accept no one. Madison High is my kingdom, Miss Brooks, and the choice of the subject therein is my choice and mine alone. The facility AI will blow your cover. Get me to one of those computers. That is all. You've got six seconds. Aye, aye, sir. Come on, Tex. I'll show you to the door. What is it, Jamie? What's wrong? I'll I don't talk know. To you alone I'm just bring you back worried about the scan. Okay, Miss Brooks. You sure been mighty scan decent. Scan initiated. Hasta la vista. Mm -hmm. Ugh. 
Adios, hombre. Doing this over and 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 over. Sir. What are those computers? Like, what am I supposed to... What is one of those computers? What are you talking about? you hurt that boy's feelings. Well, perhaps I was a bit harsh with the lad, but he caught me at a bad time. Shit. I just hung up on Jason Grill when he arrived. That malevolent old devil phoned just to taunt me about... Get me to one of those computers and do it fast. You've got 60 seconds before all hell breaks loose. Before I remembered the results of last year's contest. That was disastrous, wasn't it? Security protocol overruled. I dug up the newspaper account of the game from my file. I've got it right here. Now look at this headline. One of those computers. What does one of those computers mean? That must have been quite a second half. There's an interesting subhead, too. It says, wild-eyed spectator leaps on court and bites basketball. Ushers eject Osgood Conklin. <laughs> that story is a bald-faced lie. I know it is, Mr. Conklin. I was there. Shit. You bit the referee. We need to intercept the for a second. The facility AI will blow your cover. I Get me to one of those computers and do it fast. You've got 60 what seconds for all hell breaks loose. though, is this reminder that after the game, Madison was presented with the symbol of defeat, Cornelius the Goat. Let's see. Oh, here's that part. Cornelius must be fed and housed on the campus of the losing team for the entire school year. After four years of defeat, the goat becomes the permanent property of the humiliated institution. Well, that's a switch on a loving cup. Uh, let me remind you, Miss Brooks, that Madison has lost three games in a row to play City. If we lose this one, that bleating monstrosity will be on our hands forever. Mr. Conklin, do you remember a boy named Barton who scored over 50 points against us for Clay City? Hurry! Uh, Time's running uh, out. Oh, of course I remember now. He ran us ragged. Yeah, hey, well, that happened to nope. Tex Barton, the boy you just... What? The old you say, those computers. What? I need more information than one of those computers. Dear Miss I need more information than that. <laughs> we, we've got to do something. You've got to do something. Anything. Calm down, Mr. Conklin. All isn't lost. He's coming to my house for dinner tonight, and I'm sure I can undo some of the damage your temper has done. Uh, that is we need my to intercept problem, that 40 Brooke. seconds. I'll be happy to have dinner at your AI house tonight. <laughs> After all, in Texas, we always say there's nothing like splitting your child to help get better acquainted. So I've heard. And the way I figure, if and I can wrestle up enough grub... We might get so well acquainted, we'd never have to talk to each other again. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate dental cream, it cleans your friendly. Flat of toothpaste. Flat cleans your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath hurry. while it cleans Time's your teeth. Out. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Okay, Colgate so in the vetting cream, office. Help stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you taking no forever to load? What are you doing? What are you doing? Such conclusive proof. What are you and doing? You know that Colgate, while not mentioned by name, was the Who only cares? used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate dental cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth Shit. decay best. We need to intercept that for a second. The facility AI will blow your cover. Get me to one of those computers and do it fast. Well, when lunchtime arrived, I hurried to the school cafeteria to meet Mr. Boynton for lunch. But he was over ten minutes late. From the explanation he gave when he did arrive, it was obvious he had been detained by you someone even nearer and dearer to his heart than me, I am. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, but I had to stop by the gym and untie Cornelius the goat. I... 
I'm the only person at school who pays any attention to the poor beast. I know. Pull up a window and sit down. Thank you. Oh, uh, before I forget, I brought a little surprise in for you. It's a box of French chocolate. Hurry, for me? Running out. But it isn't my birthday or Christmas or anything. Okay. Can I give you a box of candy Good. if I feel like it? You certainly can. Mm -hmm. and it's very sweet of you, Mr. Boynton. Well, how was I supposed I to I know that? To show my appreciation. <sighs> that well, now that you mention it, I'll be very happy to have dinner at your house tonight. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought I'd have to keep coaxing you. You'll be more than welcome, Mr. Boynton, but I think I should warn you. There'll be quite a crowd over tonight. You see, when I was in Mr. Conklin's office this morning... Oh, Walter Denton told me all about it, Miss Brooks. As I understand it, Mr. Conklin insulted the boy, and now he's got to woo him into playing basketball. Yes, it is. Heaven knows the team can use him, and I'd like to help get him into the fold. What time does the wooing begin, Miss Brooks? Why does this Shall keep getting louder and louder and louder? Nine? Yes, I should be able to get rid of Tex by 8.30. <laughs> You've been a big help to the client. But I didn't do anything, Mrs. Davis. I know, but you should be a little louder. Now you better get back into the living room and join Tex. Oh, he's all right, Mrs. Davis. I gave him last Sunday's funnies to read and a box of French chocolates to nibble on. You know, you wouldn't think to look at that kid that he's Vic Barton, the famous Clay City basketball star. He'd have to be something like that. But why is Mr. Conklin so anxious to get him to enroll at Madison? Oh, it's a long story, Mrs. Davis. I'll give you a rundown after dinner. Pardon me, ladies, but uh, I got a little lonesome in the living room. Uh, the Lou Flurpas are all gone, Miss Brooks. The Lou Flurpas? Neat. Uh, those French candies you gave me to nibble on. Uh, I'll set the box on the sink. Uh, is there something I can do to help get chow ready, Miss Davis? Yes, there is, Tate. You can get the silverware out if you will. Oh, that's the front door. I'll answer it. Just make yourself at home, Tex. I will. General, a will, Tex. Miss Brooks has told me what a basketball star you were at Tate. Now, I wonder what I'm made her say that. I'm Vic Barton. Miss Brooks must have me mixed up with my brother, Vin. Oh, I never played no varsity basketball at Clay City. Oh, we have a strict routine Will you come of daily call maintenance. We've got part of that procedure. Oh, right away, ma'am. I'll be back all in a minute. Matter in the it's all right, Tex. Take your time. You can see Reed through that window. It's her job Look to who's here, Tex. It's Mr. It's Mr. Mr. Conklin. Well, slip us by, Pod. Even if Reed What's the matter the with him? Well, Mr. Conklin wants you to know that... That he was just teasing this morning when he threw you out of his office. Why, of course, my boy. I do that to all new pupils. It's sort of an initiation. Now, although we don't place too much okay. emphasis on athletics, I, know why Madison, you're really I here. just knew you want a star in some sport or other, so I knowledge brought you this all wool sweater, and I had your varsity letters sewn on it in advance. You see, a big Let me demonstrate. Tent. But Clay City, you we always spell varsity with a V. And although <laughs> You was only fun in this morning, here. and you really want me you to join up. I guess I think it over a spell longer. Please heart, do, my boy. I've got to get back to the are. kitchen now. Uh, Miss Davis wants me to get out the silverware. Silverware? And risk cutting those beautiful basket shooting hands on a sharp knife? I should say not. I'll get the silverware myself. Imagine this. Be right there. On a time schedule on a target with minute details on well, locations. Well, come in, Mr. Vine. Huh? Oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, this must be Tex. Howdy. Uh, this is Mr. Boynton, Tex. Into a surgical dance of precision. Howdy. Yes, it would. <laughs> I brought this little gift I've for you. On a sort of a welcome to Madison a combination of big data analysis Hi, what is it, Mr. Boynton? It's a knee pad, a brand new one. Those are the best kind. 
I'm sure grateful, Mrs. Boynton. I'd offer you one of the French chocolates Miss Brooks gave me, but I'm afraid they're plum gone. French chocolates? Miss Brooks, that's the same candy I gave. Oh, we're doing a big business tonight. Come on in, it's open. That would be neat. Here you are, Tex, old boy. Here's a little present for you. For me? Yeah, I noticed you ride a bicycle, so I bought you this master padlock to put on it when you leave it in front of school. You mean somebody might steal it? Please, Tex, that's one thing about Madison High. There's never been a master padlock stolen. I don't get it. Why is everybody being all fired nice to me? First, Mr. Coffin gives me a sweater, then Mr. Boynton brings me a knee pad to give me this lock. Of course, Miss Hooks gave me a whole box of loose lip of chocolates. What? But that's the same candy I gave Mr. Boynton last night. Walter. Better send the box to J. Edgar Hoover. Must be enough fingerprints on it to keep him busy for months. Tex, would you please put a new light bulb in the kitchen ceiling for me? We don't have a step ladder. I'll be right with you, Miss Davis. Uh, excuse me, folks. Uh, I'll be back for you. Sam Houston. You can say Dick Dallas too. I've got to talk to Walter. Oh, you <laughs> gave this candy to Mr. Boynton, Walter. Would you mind telling me what prompted that unusual action? It's a lie. The, the fact right, that Mr. Boynton gave us a biology right, test this morning, which if I didn't pass would make me ineligible to manage the basketball so team Friday night, has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm surprised at you. Why, that's nothing short of bribery. And I suppose I'll have to reimburse you for the chocolates you indirectly donated. Oh, that won't be necessary, Miss Brooks. I got them for nothing from Mr. Conklin. Just Only he doesn't know, know it. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I helped and Harriet right burn back. some rubbish yesterday, so she told me to help Maybe myself to some candy on the way out of her house. Of well, I didn't see the just jelly the bean she meant for me to take, so I just right latched back. onto the box of and French chocolate. It wasn't until today that Harriet told me that old Marvel had bought the chocolates for a special occasion. See, if he finds out I swiped him, he'll drug me till I'm simple. Oh, that's the bird, Walter. Mr. Conklin wouldn't lay a hand on you. Not his hand I'm worried about. When he gets through drop kicking the seat of my pants, he'll look like the lobby of Grauman's Chinese. Well, take it easy, Raffles. Nobody's going to put the finger on you around here. Well, everything's working out just splendidly, Miss Brooks. If you, oh, hello, Mr. Boynton. Well, good evening, good evening Mr. Conklin. Sir. I have the honor to inform you all of the fact that thanks oh, to my warm see. and endearing personality... Okay, this is Martin actually to enroll at more Madison annoying than anything else. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> sir. You're a little, little marvelhead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's great, Mr. Conklin, just great. End of an right here. I'll go out and get the dishes to the dinner table. I thought I'd better get the dishes, Mrs. Davis. All right, dear. I just checked what we'll need on the kitchen table. Did uh, Mr. Conklin tell blah, you the blah, blah. about Tex here? Yes, he did. Well, needless to say, Tex, we're all delighted to have Clay City's top basketball star as a Madison pupil. Hold on a minute, Miss Brooks. Uh, about that basketball stuff. Here, yeah, let's you see. Let me eat too much in Oh, I can manage them all. What were you saying, Tex? Well, it's like I was telling Miss Davis. Uh, you must have me mixed up with my brother Vince, Bart. Fine. I never played no basketball for Clay City. <laughs> all right. We heard a crash. What happened? Hey, what is it, Miss Brooks? Nothing. I'm blah, blah, blah. Two dishes. Oh, well, I'll help you pick them up. Here, I'll take the plate. Now, I'll take the soup bowls, and I'll take the cups and saucers. You've got to be more careful, Miss Brooks. No, Here, don't want to do that way. Platter. Thank you. Shocks. I don't know what made Miss Brooks get so skittish all of a sudden. Oh, just forget it, boy. Forget it. I don't understand. All I said to her was... Blah, blah, she blah. Had to up with my brother blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Did all that. For Clay City. Reynolds, Jeremy Bolt. 
So, there's no trick to well, it, so I let's just... make it unanimous. One point I, I think I ought to clear up. I said I never played no basketball status. for Clay City. Thank you for your but service. I didn't say I never played I no basketball. Know. It's just that this being my freshman year, I wasn't able to straighten out my credits till a couple of weeks ago. Nevertheless, the fact remains. I don't like to brag. After I worked out with the team for a few days, why, all the coaches agreed my brother Vince was almost as good as I am. Jeremy Nevertheless, Holt, the fact remains. I regret to inform you that Code 41 is not affected by my status. Thank you for your service. Vince was what? almost as good as that you can't are? can't be right. Code 41 yes, is confirmed sir. effective. If I said it once, I'll status. say it twice. This oh, calls for God. a celebration. Is dinner ready, Mrs. Not Davis? Good. Not quite, Connie. It'll take about a half hour yet. Why don't you all go in the living room and wait? Oh, but I'm Not starved. Good. If I could just take something with me to nibble on, I'd say, what's this? Lou Fleur for chocolate. Sharon Reed. Well, <laughs> I regret to inform you I see you we have another prank is now effective in our midst. for your employment status. A prank, sir? Thank yes, you yes, this for your candy service. Is, is sold only in novelty shops. I, I bought mine fire. early this year for fear they'd run out. I have no idea. I'm going to send a box to Jason to Brill on April 1st. <laughs> but I don't understand, Mr. Conklin, what's in the chocolate. Uh, what isn't in them? There's enough pepper and spice in each one to have Brill you clutching his bloated bay yeah, window for hours. <laughs> Just give me a second. Um, Very in. funny. You can now access the core 47. Are you positive these are the same kind of chocolates you bought, Mr. Conklin? Loop Lerpa? Loop Lerpa is simply April Fool spelled backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, wouldn't it? Well, that's the beauty hey of Hey there, it's little buddy. It's got a sweet coating that disguises the pepper. It takes about an hour to work, but once it catches on, oh, brother. <laughs> oh, brother. Peck, Peck, speak to me. Why are you turning that color? I'm a getting out of here. Getting out? But why? What's wrong, boy? I'm a going back to Clay City. No, but Peck, you... at least nobody never tried to poison me down there. I'm beginning to feel like an emotional yo-yo. <laughs> well, you'll find it out sooner or later, Mr. Conklin. Tex ate a whole box of those candies. What? But how did he get them? Uh, uh, they were a gift. A gift? But he's liable to be laid up for a week. And if he doesn't play Friday night, we're certain to get possession of that reeking goat, Cornelius! <laughs> now then, Mr. Boynton, Denton, Miss Brooks, I demand to know who gave that candy to Tex Bot. Mr. Conklin, I can disclose the identity of the culprit with one word. And that word is... <laughs> Eve Arden is our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... You get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves by shaving the palm on the brushless way. Get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves the palm on the brushless way. Hey, that's a fact, men. You Damn. can get smoother, no yes, more comfortable shaves the, the palm olive brushless shaving cream way. Just rub velvet smooth palm olive brushless into your beard. Whiskers actually protect your skin by providing a soft film that floats your razor's cutting edge. Yeah, I just gotta wait Remember, for that guy to drag this body away and we're good. Palm olive brushless shaving cream way, following directions on the package. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four reported beards easier to cut, less razor pull. Smoother, more comfortable, yes, more alone. comfortable shade. I'm sitting the room. Come on, try the palm on a brushless way yourself. No need to worry Even about the food. Nice. Water, get a shade. Got what I need to know. It's the MCP from Tron. I should have known it all along. Next time you shave, try the palm olive brushless shaving cream way. And now once again, here is Eve Hart. This week, the Colgate Palm Olive Heat Company salutes the Girl Scouts of the United States of America on their 39th birthday. 
Their ceaseless work, training, and activities have proved huh. all of us that good scouts today are good citizens tomorrow. Congratulations, Girl Scouts. This is Bert Smith reminding you to tune in next week for another Alan Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palm Olive Cave Cream for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Joe Quillen, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Listen to this. With Marvella Bell, B-E-L, you can save 90% of dishwashing work. I didn't realize that you... I don't know. From Hollywood, I get why you want protection. It's time now Indeed. For... So, if I follow the data referring to the two of you from their system before we publish Johnny the Johnny Deller. George Reed here. Oh, hi, George. How are things at Floyd's of England? Very good, as a matter of fact. Very good. Well, now, it can't all be good. He would be calling me. Well, uh, uh, I do have some... Figures. No, figures. Okay, good. Word. Singular. Huh? The small I've set up a link to the information now. To Mrs. Dora Harkness Second. Down in New York. Balan? Yes, terribly wealthy, but a real eccentric. So what's happened? The little statue I mentioned, it's gone, disappeared. Oh, what's it worth? Insured value is twenty-six fifty. Wow. Uh, twenty-six dollars and fifty cents. Huh? Twenty-six bucks and a half wouldn't even cover my expense account. Well, it just happens that she carries hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of personal property insurance with us. But for some reason or other, she attaches particular value to this statuette. Oh, I get it. You're afraid that if we don't go through the motions of trying to find it, she might take her insurance elsewhere. Precisely. Real important to you, huh? Very. Then I take it I won't have to be chintzy with the old expense Can you press account. that button? Uh, well, now, okay, George, I'll be in touch. There's no undo 47. This will shut the ICA down for good. Oh, shame. Shame for that, huh? Bailey and the intriguing adventures of a man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Hey, gone and done. I'll just return things to normal. No need to alert that we were here pre- Now, just... act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Oh no. I can hold the door. Following is the kind of expenses incurred during my investigation of the building dowager matter. Breach protocol initiated. This is bad. That means they'll shoot on sight. I'm gonna create some havoc. Expense account item one, seven ninety, taxi, train fare and incidentals, Hartford to New York. Item two, a dollar even for a cab from Grand Central Station to the address of Mrs. Dora Harkness Ballon over on East 73rd Street. How do I get out of here? It turned out to be one of New York's famous old brownstone houses, well preserved and reeking of an era long gone by. A uniformed butler rushed me into a large, high ceiling drawing room, and I could hardly believe my eyes. Ornate pre Victorian furnishings. This Every last mission kind of sucks for huge lamps and crystal telling me what to do. Oil paintings all over the place and gilded mirrors. Pretty fabulous. If you will be kind enough to wait here, Mr. Dollar, I shall tell Mrs. Ballon that you have arrived. Thank you. I know that you'll want to see you. Oh, excuse me, Master Harold. It's all right. Warning. Uh, Fire detected. The mail coming. Uh, would you like me to check, sir? Uh, yes, good idea. You know how Andorra likes to see it the minute it gets here. Yes, sir. Yes, the mail. The mail will come on every day. Uh, you're uh, here to see Mrs. Ballon? That's right. I'm Johnny Dollar. I'm Hal Winters, her nephew. Hi. Stand by. Uh, say, tell me something. Yes? About this little All statue personnel. that's missing. Breach you mean that little chunk initiated. of hot metal that's disappeared? Oh, is that what it is? Oh, yes, just a piece of junk. But a couple of months ago, Aunt Dora decided it looked like her grandfather when he was a general back in the Civil War. Oh? Why does she value it so highly? Warning. I expect the general Call was the only fellow who had guts enough to do Don't anything on his phone. own. Moving on. What do you mean? I mean, instead of just living off the family shipping fortune, so when she suddenly decided the statue looked like the general, uh, Johnny Dollar, did Command you say? Area is all clear. That's right. Please. The insurance investigator? Over. Yes. Warning. Fire well, detected. Now, why should she bother you with it? I don't know. Uh, truly, Mr. Dollar, it's not worth it. 
If I were you, I'd forget it. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'd better see if the morning mail has arrived. Now, uh, just why does the statue disappear in the morning? Tana discovered a scene from the reception room yesterday morning. Now, if you'll pardon me... Was the house broken? Possibly. But there was no sign of it. How about guests? No, we haven't had guests for a week or more. How many servants are there? Uh, Mr. Dollar, perhaps there's something I'd better tell you about that statue. The statue of the General? I tell you, Mr. Dollar. You are Mr. Dollar, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. I tell you that if you don't find out who stole it and get it back, I'll cancel every bit of my... I was about to go out and look for it myself, Tom. Let Higgins do it. It's quite all right. I don't mind. I said let Higgins do it. Well, I was... All right. But if you'll excuse me now... Oh? Why? Why, I'd like to go up to my room for a moment. To call up that... that girlfriend of yours again? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Warning. Fire oh, detective. That girl, that Nancy Gavin. She'd like to take you away from me, wouldn't she? Aunt Dora. Where would you go? What would you live on? And what would I do? Darling, I hardly think this is the problem. Much as I like Nancy Gavin, I see no reason why I should let her take you away from me. Do you? Uh, Access I, granted. I, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Brown, uh, about the statue. Uh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Mr. Dollar, you are to leave no stone unturned. Well, wow, now tell me... Uh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Oh, Higgins. Why do you sneak in on us this way? Well, what is it? The mail just arrived, and knowing you'd want to see it. Give it to Harold. Uh, uh, yes, here, I'll take care of it. Uh, well? What letter? Uh, no postmark. But? And it's so badly scrawled in pencil. Well, well don't bother Aunt Dora with it now. Uh, but it's marked personal, sir. Well, then let me have All it. All personnel. Uh, Tonta. You may go now. Uh, here, Tonta, I suppose you let me see what it's all about. Be quiet, Harold. Now, Mr. Dollar. Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all... All right, I'd like so to i got to get out of here. Well, what's the matter, Mrs. Bell? Uh, Aunt Dora, what is it? This... This letter. Yes? It's... It's a ransom note. Ransom? For the return of a statuette. The general. They want $75,000. What? <laughs> Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. This, this letter, Mr. Dollar. Maybe you'd better let me see it, Mrs. Mallon. It's a ransom note demanding seventy-five thousand dollars for the return <laughs> of my statuette just... of the general. Seventy-five thousand dollars. Yes. All right. Oh, they can't be serious. For that little piece that of pot metal, sure, they must be out of their minds. I beg your pardon. What? That statue means everything. All right, so if I can get over there and just walk away. The of my grandfather, the famous General Horace Harkness Ballard. At least it looks like him. But good heavens, Aunt Dora, seventy-five thousand. Oh. Do you object because it will mean that much less for you when I die, Harold? Of course not. Let's see if she has anything to say. Well, don't. At your age, with your lack of experience and getting along on your own, money like that would only do you harm. Would it? Yes. You'd probably leave me, strike out on your own, perhaps even marry, and heaven only knows what would happen. Mrs. Ballon, are you really serious about paying this, this ransom? I have the money. I have it right here in the safe. And if it will bring back the general... Look, why don't you let me see what I can do about it first? And have it destroyed... Destroy. Well, here, read the letter. It was the usual sort of thing, poorly written on sheet paper and scribbled in pencil. And it simply said that the money in unmarked bills was to be turned over to her nephew, Harold. That instructions for its delivery would be given to him later, secretly. That if he then divulged... The I know, letter, it's so to mean to kill a like completely innocent him. person like this, but... Further said that if the police were brought in, the statue would be destroyed. I have no choice, Mr. Dollar. I'll pay. I can't bring myself to do it. You will take it to them. Who 
whoever they are. That is a woman who literally has nothing to do with anything that's wrong, so I can't make myself do it. All right, now look, Mrs. Ballin. Yes, Tata, listen to Mr. Dollar. I have told you I must have the general back at any cost. Very well. No one is to leave this house, except Harold, of course, when he is told to by the... Or I could just go in there and kill everyone. Anything cool I open? No. Very nice. Hi, sweetie. So, Miss Mr. Dollar, this is Nancy Gavin, a, a friend of Harold. Johnny Dollar? Hey, I know about you. Nancy, you, you come to find that what you call it that Mrs. Ballin lost? What it was now? stolen. Okay, stolen. The your and the, the kidnappers are demanding $75,000 ransom. Most That's of easy, I've never tied me I to shall. a chair. And Nancy, You've seen the news. you are to stay right here in this house until so this whole thing own. is over with. And he he is I don't mind that a he bit. He is unstoppable, Do and he know? cannot be bargained with. That's correct. When are you going to let Hal marry me? Get out on his own. And leave me. I'm less than. Do you think for one minute that one my precious weakness. Harold would do that? Me. me. Why don't you answer that, Hal? Mr. Dollar, this is none of your business. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the reason for your being here. You know something, Mrs. Ballin? I'm beginning to think you're wrong. Okay, then there's one okay, last mission, then we will begin this at another right. time. And maybe I'm on the track of I want to now. thank you all for tuning in. So how about it, Hal? The hell's a Would mood you box? If you could. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm sorry I was so boring today. I hope you have a wonderful day because it is a wonderful life.